Penguin Random House Audio presents Green Lights, and I am the author, Matthew McConaughey. To the only thing I ever knew I wanted to be, and family. Green Lights, January 22nd, 1989, titled I've Found Myself, Question, the most difficult word in the universe, who, what, where, when, how. And that's the truth. Why is even bigger, I ask. I think I'll write a book, a word about my life. I wonder who would give a damn about the pleasure and the strife. I think I'll write a book. Help the generations with the truth about the past. Who's to say one would agree? Shit, I'm tired. Hope that these thoughts last. I shall think I will write a book. Mood for the sayings, favorite one, psychological, let life be, no. Then we are cowards if we let it be. Just write a book. It's from one of my journals, January 22nd, 1989. On with this book I titled Green Lights. Here we go. This is not a traditional memoir. Yes, I tell stories from the past, but I have no interest in nostalgia, sentimentality, or the retirement that most memoirs require. This is not an advice book either. Although I like preachers, I'm not here to preach and tell you what to do. This is an approach book. I am here to share stories, insights, and philosophies that can be objectively understood and, if you choose, subjectively adopted by either changing your reality or changing how you see it. This is a playbook based on adventures in my life. Adventures that have been significant, enlightening, and funny, sometimes because they were meant to be, but mostly because they did not try to be. Look, I'm an optimist by nature, and humor has been one of my great teachers. It has helped me deal with pain, loss, and lack of trust. I am not perfect, no. I step in shit all the time and recognize it when I do. I've just learned how to scrape it off my boots and carry on. Because we all step in shit from time to time. We hit roadblocks, we fuck up, we get fucked, we get sick, we don't get what we want, we cross thousands of could-have-done-betters and wish that wouldn't have happened in life. Stepping in shit is inevitable. So let's either see it as good luck or figure out how to do it less often. To life. <laughs> I've been in this life for 50 years, trying to work out its riddle for 42 and keeping diaries of clues to that riddle for the last 35. Notes about successes and failures, joys and sorrows, things that made me marvel and things that made me laugh out loud. 35 years of realizing, remembering, recognizing, gathering, and jotting down what has moved me or turned me on along the way. How to be fair, how to have less stress, how to have fun, how to hurt people less, how to get hurt less, how to be a good man, how to get what I want, how to have meaning in life, how to be more me. Now, I never wrote these things down to remember. I always wrote things down so I could forget. The idea of revisiting my life and musings was a daunting one. I wasn't sure if I'd enjoy the company. Recently, I worked up the courage to sit down with those diaries and have a look at the 35 years of writing about who I've been over the last 50. And you know what? <laughs> I enjoyed myself more than I thought I would. I laughed, I cried, I realized I had remembered more than I expected and forgot less. What did I find? I found stories I witnessed and experienced, lessons I learned and forgot, poems, prayers, prescriptions, answers to questions I had, reminders of questions I still have, affirmations for certain doubts, beliefs about what matters, theories on relativity, and a whole bunch of bumper stickers. I found consistent ways that I approached life that gave me more satisfaction at the time and still. I found a reliable theme. So I packed up those journals and took a one-way ticket to solitary confinement in the desert where I began writing what you hear now. An album, a record, a story of my life so far. Things I witnessed, dreamed, chased, gave, and received. Truth bombs that interrupted my space and time in ways I could not ignore. Contracts I have made with myself, many of which I live up to, most of which I still pursue. These are my sights and scenes, felt and figured out, cools and shamefuls, graces, truths, and beauties of brutality, initiations, invitations, calibrations, and graduations, getting away with, getting caught, and getting wet, trying to dance between the raindrops. Rites of passage. All between are on the other side of persistence and letting go, on the way to the science of satisfaction in this great experiment called life. 
Hopefully, it's medicine that tastes good. A couple of aspirin instead of the infirmary. A spaceship to Mars without needing your pilot's license. Going to church without having to be born again and laughing through the tears. It's a love letter to life. Now, speaking of bumper stickers, I have always loved bumper stickers. So much so that I've stuck bumper to sticker and made them one word, bumper sticker. They're lyrics, one-liners, quick hitters, unobtrusive personal preferences that people publicly express. They're cheap and they're fun. They don't have to be politically correct because, well, they're just bumper stickers. From the font they're in to the color scheme to the word or words they say, a bumper sticker tells you a lot about the person behind the wheel in front of you. Their political views, if they've got a family or not, if they're free spirits or conformist, funny or serious, what kind of pets they have, what kind of music they like, even what their religious beliefs might be. Over the last 50 years, I've been collecting my bumper stickers. Some I've seen, some I've heard, some I stole, some I dreamed, some I said. Some are funny, some are serious, but they all stuck with me. Because that's what bumper stickers do. I've included quite a few of my favorites in this book. The sole objective is the pursuit of the singular finish with only the arrival in sight. This is what brings us together. Mm hmm. Sometimes you got to go back to go forward. And I don't mean going back to reminisce or chase ghosts. I mean go back to see where you came from, where you've been, how you got here. That's me from a Lincoln ad in 2014. You might remember that one. It got parodied quite a bit. Sold a lot of cars, too. So, how did I get here? Well, I've earned a few scars getting through this rodeo of humanity. I've been good at it. I've been not so good at it. And ultimately, I've found some pleasure in all of it, either way. Here are some facts about me to help set the table. I am the youngest brother of three and the son of parents who were twice divorced and thrice married to each other. We grew up saying, I love you to each other. We meant it. I got whipped until my butt bled for putting on a Cracker Jack tattoo when I was 10 years old. When I first threatened to run away from home, my parents packed my bags for me. My dad wasn't there the day I was born. He called my mom and said, only thing I have to say is if it's a boy, don't name him Kelly. The only thing I ever knew I wanted to be in life was a father. I learned to swim when my mom threw me in the Lano River and I was either going to float off the rocky waterfall 30 yards downstream or make it back to the bank. I made it to the bank. I was always the first one to wear out the knees in my tough skin jeans. For two years, I led the under-12 soccer league in red cards as a goalie. When I kept whining about my lone pair of tennis shoes being old and out of fashion, my mom told me, keep griping, and I'll take you to meet the boy with no feet. I was blackmailed into having sex for the first time when I was 15. I was certain I was going to hell for the premarital sex. Today, I am merely certain that I hope that's not the case. <laughs> I was molested by a man when I was 18 while knocked unconscious in the back of a van. I've done peyote in Real de Catorce, Mexico, in a cage with a mountain lion. I've had 78 stitches sewn into my forehead by a veterinarian. I've had four concussions from falling out of four trees, three of them on a full moon. I have bongoed naked until the cops arrested me. I have resisted arrest. I applied to Duke, University of Texas at Austin, Southern Methodist, and Grambling for my college education. I got accepted to three out of four. I've never felt like a victim. I have a lot of proof that the world is conspiring to make me happy. I've always gotten away with more in my life than in my dreams. I've had many people give me poems that I did not know I wrote. I've been naive, evil, and a cynic, but I am most fearless in my belief of my and mankind's benevolence and the common denominator of the values among us. I believe the truth is only offensive when we're lying. I was raised on existential outlaw logic, a carnation of malaprops, full of fictitious physics. Because if it wasn't true, it ought to be. There was nothing fictitious about the love, though. The love was real. Bloody sometimes, but never in question. I learned early on how to get relative, how to deal. I learned resilience, consequences, responsibility, and how to work hard. 
I learned how to love, laugh, forgive, forget, play, and pray. I learned how to hustle, sell, charm, turn the tide, make a downfall, my upfall, and spin a yarn. I learned how to navigate highs and lows, hugs and blows, assets and deficits, love songs and epithets. <laughs>